Hey, how's it going? We're here with Nick Thielen today. How you doing, Nick? Good, how are you, Tim? Thielen Mechanical. And what's the name of your roofing company? Uh, Boulder Creek Construction. Boulder Creek Construction. And it's unusual to have both. It is. And I know you, the HVAC company, HVAC heating, plumbing company came first. Yep. Um, why why do you want to pursue uh, a roofing company as well? A buddy of mine did it and we had we grew up together We talked about uh, partnering at some point and long story short. We uh, We decided to do it here last year last April and uh, Yeah, it's going going well. You're up to like six million at that or something like that. Yeah, uh, we'll do like seven and a half eight million this year Bruh. Roofing. Bruh. That's good. Yeah that's good for your first year. Yep. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah. You know that's good. Yep. Um, and then where's the um, HVAC plumbing company? Oh, at? we're about six. Okay. Yep. All right. So do you regret it? No. Adding the roofing company on? No, I love it. All right. Let's check out this uh, the first company here, Thielen Mechanical. They're right next to each other, so we're gonna do a little double tour, double header. Yep. Did you guys clean up a little bit oh, for this us? Is Andy. Uh, <laughs> Briefly. Nah, okay. we, we did the show. Tim, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, what do you do here? I'm um, the service manager. What do you feel like you guys have been leveling up on lately? Um, it seems like our service guys have been more attentive to their actual job every day. Yeah. Um, we're trying to get them in the same mindset as Nick and I, um, kind of moving forward and scaling the company. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Yep. Amy looks important. I don't know. Amy is very important. Amy, what do you do? I am the office manager. What do you think that you do better than some other HVAC companies out there? Um, I think that we um, provide a level of service similar to like if you were our family or our best friends. Mm -hmm. um, we that's how we like to treat people. So awesome. Well, appreciate you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for saying what's up. Talk to me about drain cleaning. It is a massive market. Um, yeah. The problem with the market and drain cleaning we're trying to change is the big guys around town kind of set the business model. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of want to be a hybrid of helping the customer and helping ourselves. Um, it's a really predatory market. Okay. So I've been in the market for about 20 years now. I've had my own thing going for a mm -hmm. long time. Uh, this is square one for us kind of getting into this commercial, industrial, okay. municipal stuff. Um, we have some pretty good uh, jobs coming up. We have some relationships that we've been cultivating and we're growing that side of our company right now. So yeah. then we'll have HVAC, plumbing, drain cleaning, and in the future, some electrical stuff. Okay. Um, moving forward, yeah, the sky's the limit with it. How does the recurring, or do you guys have memberships? Uh, yeah, we, we push here? memberships very yeah. heavily. You got it. Um, and with the memberships, it's really designed to keep the guys busy. Yeah. And also stay in front of the homeowners the whole time. Uh, they're seeing us two to three times a year minimum. We maintain our relationship with them. Uh, they usually, typically we try to send the same guy out time and time again uh, to where they really build uh, essentially a friendship with that technician. They're comfortable. I mean, a lot of them get like Christmas cards or, you know, little stuff like that from the Yeah, we've customers. had the so. same guy on our system yep. for like 20 years. He's like, I knew that he knew the previous homeowners right. and all that. Right. It's kind it's of super nice. Yeah. Yeah, and you they feel know this, they know how long yeah. you know they know what needs to be done. Gives you comfort, right? Yeah. So, and that's what we're here to provide is a is an experience more so than just uh, fixing the furnace or condition. Yeah, we want to kind of get away from those emergency calls. Um, most companies survive on emergency calls. Mm -hmm. We kind of want to be in there and find out about the stuff before it's a problem. Yeah. Um, that's how I look at it. The guys should be doing all their checklists every time, which they do and then we'll find the problem, we'll fix it before it's 20 below at two in the morning on a Saturday, and it'll get fixed in the fall, and then you don't have to worry about it the whole time after that. And that goes with plumbing and drain cleaning as well. Absolutely. All right, talk me through a few other things in this uh, space. What are we looking at? All right, well, we'll start over here. Basically, what we got over here is gonna be anything from your furnaces, your bath fans, uh, your blower motors. Uh, we got parts and pieces for every type of furnace you can use. I mean, right now, Carrier and Goodman is our, kind of our go-to. Um, we're not set in stone on a uh, specific branded. Um, how do you, how, how did you make those decisions? Like, why are those your two, your two companies quality. right now? Yeah, it's a quality, it's like you know. We believe in. Yep, so yeah. anything that we install, we want to install in our own home. Um, better efficiencies, you know, you get your tax credits, you get your rebates, you get your stuff like that. 
Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to produce longevity too. It could be 15, 20 years tops. How often does it not live up to those like years? You're talking about 15, 20 years. Like how, how often does it die at seven or 10? I mean, all not all, yeah, it all depends based off going yeah. back to, you know, your two time visits. If you're not cleaning your heat exchanges, if you're not, you know, checking your flues and, and making sure stuff's like that up to shape or, you know, starving the system is what is a huge cause of these failures. Yeah. Um, running low on refrigerants, you know, obviously not having adequate gas burning through your uh, gas valves, stuff like that. So it's a lot of stuff that incorporates that, the two. It's so funny because it's, it's just a, just homeowner brain. I don't know any of this stuff. So it's kind of crazy because. I, I right. love my guy, but I'm not necessarily educated on that particular piece. Yeah, and you sound like a lot of homeowners that we deal yeah. with. I mean, it's it's one of those things where you got we like to educate them, you know, get in front of them, show them, take them down the mechanical and say, hey, this is the reason why this is happening. You got a dirty filter there, you're starving that system. That furnace has got to work double the time. That AC's out there cranking away. You can hear them humming down the block, you know. Yeah. And what else, what else? walk me around a little bit, talk me so through. So yeah. we got our water heaters there. We keep a couple of different size water heaters, standard gravity power vents. Okay. Um, we got our Is this there's... often an emergency thing? This typically, seems like something. Typically water heaters are gonna be, cause you know, obviously if you don't have yeah. hot water, you can't shower, you can't do the dishes, can't do the load of laundry, your wife's yelling yeah. at you cause they got a pile standing in front of your door. How much stuff, like let's say, as you guys find issues with systems and things like that, how much stuff do you have on hand for the problem, like as it happens versus so, like, we have to order it in. How often, it, like what's the balance on those? So I'd say, I'd say probably 80% of the time, if it's an off part, we got to order it. It's usually okay. we call our wholesaler that are building yep. that relationship with our manufacturer, getting them in the loop. They usually get their inside sales tech, outside sales, and they have them getting a part ordered. And we can next day it, air ship it, whatever we got to do. Mm -hmm. um, but you got a lot of part, you got a lot of stuff hanging out. So this is obviously a business that's been around a little while and has, has seen the need for these things on a yep. regular basis, right? So like, exactly. so you've we, got certain things that yeah. you know we have. So this yeah. inventory here, we're gonna keep mostly stock for our guys. They come in, they load their vans up there, stacking all their stuff up, taking inventory of their yep. van, what they have on it, come here, grab what they need for the day for a new con job, throw it in, throw it in some tubs and get it off the job site so we can get going on a roughing because everyone's on a time crunch when you're building a home, whether it's uh, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, you know, everything that involves that. You wanna stay What percentage that. of your business is builders? Uh, yeah. Five. Five, five but like that's the quickness level that that's a little bit more quick turnaround yep. time stuff. Yep. yep. What's the most difficult part of running a company like this? Keep, keep everyone on the same page. I would say, yeah, having having a structure, having a process, having that process in my head and then applying that process and then one thing doesn't go right. Um, having to get on multiple, multiple steps to try to get back to where we were. So it's either like you go forward and then you got to backtrack and you go forward, you got to backtrack. So there's always this like, we want to make everything into our process. This is what I'm finding yep. at my company is we want to make everything into a process, yep. but not everything can be a process. Like no. some of it requires just smart people. Yep. We got to be smart people. Yeah. And so that's where I get, I struggle a little bit with uh, my team because we've, we've hammered the idea of process into their heads, yep. making real processes. Yep. Right. So then when there's something off the process, they're like, ah, yeah. I can't figure it out. It's like, you're smart. Yeah. You can figure this out. And that's, I, that's where I've learned a lot from him. Even when coming yeah. on here, you know, there's been times where he just sits out there and I'll ask him questions, you know, he'll walk me through it. And then, you know, he kind of, it kind of clicks to start going, okay, well that makes sense. And then sometimes, you know, it's, it's good. Like if he doesn't answer, cause then I sit here and I try to troubleshoot and I, I try to figure it out. And he's, yeah. and he's even told us that he's actually done it before. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, let's let him try to figure it out. Let him try to troubleshoot diagnosis and that's a lot of times with these younger generations they go out there they're like oh it doesn't work well i can't fix it that's incredible anybody else you want to shout out that's doing great things in the company um i would say yeah, i got we got a, a few techs that are yeah. that actually they actually grown let's, and actually, let's walk let's walk yeah. over to them do you feel a, what is your level of personal responsibility like when you're with a homeowner and you're you're feeling like do you, do you feel like you have to get them the right thing? Like where, where are you? Well, I, your their house is my house. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel about it. I'm yeah. going to treat their house. Like I would treat my house. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend anything that I wouldn't put into my own place. And I wouldn't want to put some substandard that I wouldn't think would be a good product into their house. Um, last question for you. Wipes. Uh, I've, I've had some dude wipes. Mm -hmm. Um, what it, for the, the folks at home, this one might be a little bit more for a homeowner. Just one question for the homeowner. What about the, is, are wipes okay in some circumstances or no. should they never be used? They, 
Why, should, were, why was this product okay. invented then? They That's the question. They should be used and not flushed on the toilet. I mean, they say they're flushable wipes. Washcloths are flushable. Yeah. Golf balls are flushable. Anything that you can fit down that toilet is flushable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good just, be, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's my soapbox. Right? Yeah. They're the wipes. That's, I deal with the wipes. Okay. Yeah. So um, throughout all my experience, one thing I've known is that there's a lot of municipalities out there throughout the country that have class action lawsuits against all these companies. Really? Because of the flushable thing. Yeah. Well, what they're saying is that they're guaranteeing that they're flushable, that they get through the toilet. Yeah. But the pipe's a whole other thing. Um, realistically, 99% of the white clubs I've ever ran into are beyond the toilet, which is beyond um, your capability as a homeowner to clear that. Mm. So then you're calling us. So yeah. uh, use at your own peril, how's that? So if you wanna see Thielen's uh, drain cleaning services, <laughs> use all the wipes, no, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only things that should go in the toilet are poo, paper, and piss. All right. all right, all that should go down a toilet. That's Amen, it. brother. All right, dude, what's your name? I'm Dan. Dan, nice to meet you. Hey, thank you guys all you. for doing this yep. with us. We're actually gonna go check out the, the other office over here. Right on. Thank you guys for taking the time. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank you. Yes. So this is Boulder Creek. Just roofing? Uh, roofing, siding, windows, gutters. Roofing, siding, siding windows, gutters, and operate right next to Thielen Mechanical. Of we just Boulder. remodeled this all last November. What did you learn from the last office that you tried to apply to this office? Because uh, you know, just once, finish it first. Um, yeah, like you saw Amy's office has insulation still on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. just go for it. Yeah. Just do the investment up yeah. front. So yeah, we got all like, your core values up there and everything. Yeah. Culture, loyalty, accountability, speed, and success. Yeah, this, uh, what ends up spelling out class? Oh, that's dope. We live by the core values, so. Um, we don't care if we have somebody that can make a ton of money, if they're not good for all of those things, time to part ways. That's the office tour. I appreciate you for checking out this very cool two-part office tour.